Um, my name's Sam. I work as a trainer for um, Maiden Academy and have um, recently moved across to, to work for them, coming from a team where we had uh, quite a lot more senior people um, kind of working remotely compared to um, sitting in a room with a bit, bunch of people who don't know how to code and are relying on you to teach them how to, um, <laughs> which is quite a lot of these lot over here. <laughs> They're all right. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to go through some of the um, some of the soft skill sort of changes that I've had to kind of adjust to, I suppose, coming from a different environment to this one. Um, and I like with Charlie's, it's just a list of gifts that I wanted to show people. Um, I don't have the jazzy backgrounds, but um, it's basically the same. So it's, 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 get, it's getting them to, to this point is, is what we want, really. Um, so the first thing that I, uh, I wanted to talk about was um, the metaphors and analogies that you use stick with them for quite a long time compared to, so if you're talking to like non-technical um, colleagues, they don't really care how you've explained it. They just want to know whether or not they can have that snazzy feature or how long it's going to take you to actually come up with, come up with what they want. Um, so they don't really care about the analogies and you can use different analogies when explaining the same thing to them over and over and over again. Um, just to keep things interesting for yourself, but with students you have to maintain the same analogies and choose ones that are extensible, so that once you've, when you're coming to another concept that goes over the top of what you've already done, um, you can build on that initial analogy to explain further concepts. Um, patience, and patience, and patience. Um, they don't move as fast as, as sort of uh, more experienced developers. Um, that was it should be really obvious. Um, <laughs> it wasn't. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just learning to kind of to take your time, slow down, and make sure that they've got what they need to work things out for themselves, rather than um, just sitting back and expecting them to have built everything that's on the curriculum in the first 15 minutes of the class. Um, <laughs> watching them fail was really difficult, um, sort of shoulder surfing and seeing where they were going wrong, but allowing them to diagnose the problem, work it out for themselves, and go through the diagnostic steps that will be super useful to them in the future. Um, but yeah, just kind of wandering past and going, oh, no, you don't, not that, don't, don't do that. Um, it's, it's much easier to, uh, to allow them to do that. Uh, well, it's much easier to want to jump in than it is to stand back and, and let them do that. Um, so <laughs> when you're, when you're demonstrating um, a, a very simple concept, building a tiny little applet to demonstrate that concept is really easy. Naming all the variables in there A, B, C, and D is also really easy, but is terrible for their learning experience. And this is what they're doing to your code all the time. This is why I chose this GIF, is that they spend their entire time paying like a lot of attention, very focused to what, they're, um, to what you're showing them and they spot things and pick them up and immediately start doing bad practice because you've shown it to them as an acceptable thing to do, where it's not. Um, like, you don't jump in and mess with another colleague's note-taking process. Like, if you're sitting in a meeting, you don't go, oh, you haven't written that down right, because um, that's a weird thing to do to your colleagues. Um, so jumping in and helping other people with their note-taking and the way that they're recording what's actually going on in the class is, was really weird to me. Um, yeah, just a very strange thing to have to, um, to, have to do. Um, making sure that the, your analogies and your, um, the, the things that you're explaining to people are relatable. Um, Mike was talking about Twitter in almost the first lesson that we had, and we had a, a classmate who just went, what's Twitter? So um, having to completely bin off and reinvent that entire lesson um, for people who don't know what Twitter is, is, um, is really important. And being flexible with, with what people know um, at, at class time, really. Um, again, slowing down, just not rushing through to jumping to building a product and getting out there, because they're the product. And it takes a while to build them um, and to get them to where they need to be. You need to build solid foundations in what you're teaching them. Now, a fantastrophe is something that a friend of mine um, explained to me, which is where someone submits code for review and you've no idea how the hell it's doing what it's supposed to do, right? But it does, 
Um, so you have to unpick it all. Um, and actually these guys do it less than the outsourced team that I was working with, um, which I found really impressive, to be honest. They're, you know, There's a lot less, how the hell have you done this? And maybe it's the simplicity of what we're teaching them at this particular point, but at the same time, they're doing better than a bunch of, than a whole team of people that were being paid for this sort of thing. Um, and oh, that doesn't play. Anyway, it's a nice little leaf that kind of floats down. It's very relaxing. Um, <laughs> I'll just go, go by the description of it. Um, so yeah, um, unagilizing, I suppose. Like we spent a lot of time kind of rushing and failing fast and all that kind of stuff and iterating, making MVP, proof of concept and that kind of thing. And we don't get that. We get one shot at making these people into junior developers, and that's this is the shot that we get. Um, so we just have to take our time and relax through it. Um, and I think that's the end of the gifts. So yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>